I left Blythe, California yesterday, midday, and it was around 80 degrees. And today I woke up in Flagstaff and it was a balmy 21. Now you might ask yourself, why would I do that to myself? It's because I'm here in Flagstaff at Northern Arizona Wind and Sun to get my solar installed. Hey everybody, it's Robin with Creativity RV, and I'm here in my truck. That's my fifth wheel behind me. And I'm here in the back parking lot of Northern Arizona Wind and Sun because I'm having a bunch of solar put on my roof today. Now the boy says, cool mom, when are we gonna get out of the truck and put the slides out so I can relax? Well, I just wanna make sure I'm parked in the right place for these guys that are installing it. Like you guys might know, this is my third rig. On my first two rigs, I had about 400 watts of solar. It was enough for me to charge my batteries, which I only was able to have two of because my rigs were smaller, and charge some lithium power boxes so that I had power overnight. But I wasn't able to use some of the stuff that I wanted to use like an Instant Pot or a blow dryer or an air fryer or something like that without having my generator on. Well, when I bought this new fifth wheel, I had the choice of putting a generator and an inverter and more batteries in it. It only comes with one battery. I have a Grand Design Solitude. And that would have been about six grand for the generator and the inverter. And so I decided to opt out of that and put that money into solar. When I talked to Doug here, he literally asked me what appliances I used and what kind of a refrigerator I had and how long I used them and how long I boondocked. And about three days later, they came up with this great sheet. Actually, it was three pages of components, everything down to the screws that they thought that I needed to put together a whole system. And then we went through the cost and we went through what I needed and what I didn't need. And what I ended up getting was 1,200 watts of solar, a 3,000 watt inverter, and six lithium batteries. Now, the most expensive thing in that was the lithium batteries. I have heard some people... Um, are concerned about the safety of the lithium. So we did a lot of research. I talked to Doug about that. The RV lithium batteries have come a long way. They seem to be a lot safer than other lithium batteries. And here's the thing, you guys. With my old AGM batteries, on one of my rigs, I actually had to check the water in them and they were hard to get to. And you can't run them down lower than 50% because it can wreck the battery. That's hard when you're boondocking, even if you have solar. So with lithium batteries, you can actually run them all the way down. They weigh a lot less. And long-term, I thought they were a better investment for me. The other thing is that I have a nice big space for batteries because I didn't get a generator in this rig, but all of the components and the lithium, I understand is only gonna take up half of that bin. Before I even got here, they put all of the components on a power panel together that is going to pop right into my bin. So they don't have to install it all piece by piece while I'm here. My understanding is they just have to put the panels on the roof, pop up that power board, put in the batteries. That should all take about eight hours, I'm told. And then the actual head engineer walks me through the entire system. But this thing is going to be a monster. I even heard, you guys that I'll be able to run one of my air conditioners off this thing. It's like the unicorn of RV life. Hey, they're here. That's him. That's my installer, I think. I'm so excited. This is James. He's with Northern Arizona Wind and Sun. There you go. He's up in my bin, up in your installing bin. my stuff. How's it going, James? Everything's going great. <laughs> right on. He's going to walk me through the system here in a minute. I'm super excited. This is my solar controller GX. 
What do you think, boy? Pretty exciting, right? I am gonna learn how to use this in just a minute. Man, installing solar is hard work. So these guys have been at it for hours and even I'm exhausted. <laughs> so I think they're almost done, which is great because then they're gonna give me a walkthrough, which I'm gonna share with you guys. So if you have any questions about solar and how it works, hopefully the questions will be answered here too. See, this is the benefit of going to a fifth wheel. Look at the room I have for batteries. Yeah, so there's 600 amp hours of lithium. And then this is the full system, right? So um, if we start at the bottom, this is the Lynx bus bar network. So there's enough to really put eight batteries on there. So if you wanted to add two more batteries, you could uh, without really needing to modify the system too much. Um, this is the shunt. This is what's monitoring. So all the batteries connect here and then all the loads connect over here and all the energy flows through this. So this is what monitors all the energy flow from the batteries and keeps track. That's essentially your fuel gauge inside. Okay. And then this right here is your inverter, uh, 3000 watt multi plus. Okay. And then these are the charge controllers here managing, uh, 600 and uh, 50 watts or 40 watts each, right? So there's like 1,280 watts on the roof of solar and then, you know, split into each charge controller so we can monitor the front panels and the middle panels. Um, and then this is the breaker box and then this is the DC disconnect for um, all the DC power to your rig. And this is the panel that you guys built for me before I even got here, right? right. So you just had to pop it in, which is amazing. Yeah, you just measured it and then I... Uh, <laughs> I did, I, I did okay? Of course. Nice, nice. Um, what's the red thing? Do not touch the red button. No, these are just disconnects. So this is the primary like cables from your power source, uh, or from the batteries essentially, they're four odd like cables. And then they go to this disconnect, which is 350 amp rated, like 600 amp peak. So then we pull everything from that disconnect. So if you want to shut the entire rig off, like if I put it in storage or something? Um, yeah, so you know how you have the disconnect up there? Uh-huh. So if you throw both of these disconnects, you'll completely shut the entire rig off. Okay. Which some might say is an issue or not. You have the choice as to whether or not you want to do that. This disconnects the inverter. This disconnects the DC distribution. Okay. So if you shut that off, it'll just shut the inverter off. If you shut this off, then it'll shut off the like smoke detectors and CO and everything inside the ring. So okay. when you put it in storage, like a lot of people wouldn't shut this off. But then again, if you're putting it in long-term storage, what does the smoke detector and CO detector oh, gotcha. really matter, right? So, well. um, but honestly, if you put it in storage, you don't really need to shut anything off. You just turn off the inverter and then the solar will maintain everything provided it's still getting sun. So, okay, cool. Yeah, so first things first, We've got your entire system integrated. So we have an inverter system that's supplying power to your receptacles and your microwave and basically anything you want to run inside the rig. Um, we have the display panel down here. So we can go ahead and take a look at this. Effectively, this kind of shows you what's going on with the system. Um, it's kind of late now, so we're, we're making just a little bit of solar power. Um, the inverter is running AC loads. You actually still have that fan going inside there. So um, this is showing you what's coming off the battery, which is effectively the difference between all three of these loads. And this is like all your DC loads. So like the the LED lights. This one down here is like the LED lights. Um, and then this will be all the, like the receptacles up here and anything running off the inverter. So the fan, the vent fan, and the LED lighting and the slides and such will all show up on this as your DC loads. And then up here will be the AC loads. And then this is essentially your battery bank um, capacity. Uh, currently it needs to calibrate because the system just came online. But effectively this is going to show like a fuel tank here. So um, if you are at like 50%, the blue line would be halfway and it would oh. be kind of gray at the top. and um, blue halfway up so um, it also shows you how your net draw from the batteries and the current battery voltage so net right now we're discharging at like 8 amps from the batteries 
which is the difference between all of these. There's like 220 watts of loads and then 130 watts of supply coming in. And you can kind of see how the power is going. So like the solar is supplying energy to the loads right here and then also the batteries are supplying energy to the DC side. But when you're making a lot more solar power, you'll see that this will all be going that way towards the batteries. Okay, so right now I'm like at 13.2? Yeah. If it needs to reset though, you said. Well, 13.2 just is the battery voltage, but this is actually now gonna show your state of charge just like you would have on a fuel tank. Okay. Like, you know, how you have your fuel gauge. So this is essentially your battery state oh, of cool. charge. So like voltage really doesn't matter, especially with these lithium batteries. You're gonna use this as a reference. One We're gonna link this to what's called the VRM network which is um, like a cloud-based monitoring uh, through Victron. And then I'll be able to see what's going on in your system and if you ever have any issues. Oh, cool. Yeah, you can just call me up and, and I can say, well, this happened or that happened, or like if I have to, I can reprogram your inverter from my desk, like anything that I need no to way. do. No way, I didn't know that. Yeah, so, and I can actually access this panel. So. Once I have it set up, if you're like, hey, I don't remember what you said about this or that, I can actually go in here and move your panel around. Oh my gosh. Like right in front of you and show you like this particular setting does this or look at this to do that kind cool. of situation. So we'll get you fully networked and so set up. So not on my own once I leave? No, I can help you. Okay. Forever. Is there an app also? Yeah, so there's gonna be, a, there's a couple different apps. There's uh, the charge controllers, um, are Bluetooth, so you can look at them on like near near location Bluetooth. But the VRM, which is the same program that I'll link you to to my profile, uh -huh. you can have as an app on your phone, and so you'll be able to adjust your settings or like turn on your inverter from like anywhere in the world. So in like or, my camp chair, like outside. At, yeah, in your camp chair, or like if you <laughs> park your rig and fly somewhere, right? And like, you can check and see what's going on on your system if That's you have amazing. to, like, that kind of thing. Okay. And you can set up warnings and alarms. We can also set up like extra temperature sensors and whatnot. So you can like get an alarm if the temperature inside this rig gets too hot with your cat or something like that okay. too, so. Oh, wow. So um, what kind of maintenance do I need to do with these batteries and with this system? None. Perfect. Uh, so well, I can... I mean, aside from getting your rig into some rain every now and then to wash the panels off. Okay, that sounds good. Um, what if I see that the level's getting really low? Then uh, stop using power. Chill out. Chill out. Yeah. Okay. So I can run an air fryer, my Instant Pot, recharge my devices, the TVs, one air conditioner, maybe? Yeah, If it's really able... sunny and hot. So, like, the thing to bear in mind is that the system that I put together for you is limited to 3,400 watts or 3,000 VA continuously. So you wouldn't want to like run your microwave and air conditioner and several other things all at one time. Right. But that's not to say you couldn't run one at a time kind of situation, right? So you just have to manage your loads. That's important. He's got a new friend. Somebody likes James. He's cute. <laughs> so I'll manage the loads. So is the, would it pop a breaker? Like a normal uh, well, what will overload would happen is the inverter will overload, so it it's not gonna cause a, like damage. It'll throw an alarm up, and you'll know you messed up. Then what do I do? Is there a breaker on the inverter? I just go reset the inverter. You just, just turn reset it off it. And turn it back on. Easy peasy. And then don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Heard. Okay. Yeah. I think that's it. I think I'm good. And the other things is like, the the inverter is gonna shut off, low voltage disconnect. If you graveyard your batteries, like completely kill them. Um, it's not the end of the world. Like, you, you're not going to destroy them. That's the great thing about having a lithium battery bank with an internal BMS or with a BMS in general is that it's going to self-protect. So there's really not a whole lot you can do to destroy the system. 